Well, thank you for thank you for the organization committee for selecting this uh, abstract. I'm happy to to present the research findings once they load up here. There you go. So I'm not going to be able to stay after the session because I have to go and cheer my wife who's running her first marathon in Milwaukee. So I'm going to run after this. But uh, this is my contact information. If you want to uh, collaborate, if you find this this results interesting and you want to do something about it with me, I'll be happy to collaborate. So as many of you know, non-small cell lung cancer is the second most common cause. I'm sorry, the second most common cancer, sec uh, second to prostate cancer in the VA. And more importantly, is uh, this, the most common cause of cancer death among our veterans. The majority of patients have metastatic disease at diagnosis, and therefore we know that treatment is not curative, but rather palliative, meaning that uh, treatment is, uh, is the main goal of the treatment is to improve quality of life and to extend survival as much as possible. The standard of care is a plat platinum doublet, which means that it's either cisplatin or cabalplatin with another uh, partner, and which platinum to use is a matter of debate. Cisplatin and carboplatin have different toxicity, uh, toxicity profiles, and uh, several randomized controlled trials have been conducted with mixed results. The main one of those is ECOG 1594, which was a study that was published in 2002 in the New England Journal of Medicine. And this was a very big study that compared four arms of uh, chemotherapy, three containing cisplatin, another one containing carboplatin. And what it showed was that they were really uh, equal. I, my other hat, aside from being a lung oncologist at the VA, is being a lung oncologist at the medical college where, where I see a lot of second opinions. And what I see is that uh, community physicians, uh, what they tend to do is if somebody, somebody's younger, somebody's fitter, they give them the benefit of the doubt and they treat with cisplatin rather with, uh, than uh, carboplatin. So when we have a lot of, of data and we don't have a clear answer, the main thing we do is a meta-analysis. So there's been several in this topic. One is a Cochrane analysis, which found no difference. This was recently published uh, this year. And there's another one that's a, a patient-level meta-analysis that uh, pulled up about eight uh, uh, trials, including ECO-1594, and uh, overall, they saw no difference, but they did see a difference in those patients that were treated with third generation um, uh, regimens. And the authors of this patient um, meta analysis uh, went on to say, and this is a quote, that this platinum should remain the reference platinum agent for treatment of non normal cell lung cancer. And if you think about it, this is true for many clinical trials. One example is cisplatin and pemetrexid. A little bit about outcomes research in oncology. This is very important because it provides a check of effectiveness rather than efficacy. So efficacy is when you say, okay, that I have a question. This drug is, you design an experiment, you design a randomized controlled trial, and, and you prove that something is, is uh, efficacious. But then you have to see if it's effective. Is it, once applied to a real world setting, is it, really, is it really doing what it's supposed to do? It also provides clinicians and patients with real-world scenarios. What happens with patients in the real world? The majority of outcome research in this uh, arena is done through CR Medicare, but CR Medicare is very limited because it's only done in patients who are, or the majority of, of patients are above 65 years of age, and there's limited access to patient-level data. So what we did was to ask the VACCR to give us all the patients that were diagnosed with non-small non cell lung cancer from October 1st of 2001 to September 30th of 2008. And once we have those patients, then we queried several databases, including the DSS, CDW, and MedSAS to identify what chemotherapy they had received, what uh, was their date of death, what their, were their weights, their laboratory values, their healthcare utility utilization and we limited that to four months after the first uh, treatment and also comorbidities. So this figure uh, shows that we started with 20, 20, close to 20,000 patients. Uh, 7,000 of them received chemotherapy and this is a well-known fact that, uh, that the majority of patients do not receive uh, chemotherapy with stage four lung cancer. 5,000 of those uh, received chemotherapy within four months and therefore were included. We excluded 121 patients that received a platinum agent alone, 896 that did not receive a platinum agent, and 81 that received three drugs, and we called that a triplet combination. So that left us with 4,790 patients, and that's what uh, our cohort is made of. 
we were able to pull up uh, laboratory values for uh, these patients, and as an example, we were able to identify hemoglobin at the start of treatment in the majority of our patients, 99.3, and albumin levels for 88.3% of our patients. We also can identify weight at the start of, of our treatment, and we, we define this as a weight that, that was um, uh, collected within 15 days of the start of the treatment, and we compare that to a weight that was collected uh, three months from the start of treatment to two years uh, from the start of treatment, and we could see if there was uh, a difference. We all know that weight loss is a significant uh, prognostic factor. This is a very busy slide, and I don't want you to go uh, and read it all, but I want to focus your attention on, on a couple of things. So of, of our patients, the majority of them, 93%, received a carboplatin-based regimen as the initial therapy. 8% received a cisplatin-based uh, regimen. The patients were, that were treated with cisplatin were, on average, a little bit younger than the patients that, that received carboplatin. They had, on average, uh, better uh, renal function. They had less incidence of chronic disease. They had less comorbidity uh, scores. Another way of looking at this is the percentage of patients that had a, a Charleston comorbidity index, which is, tells you how other, what other comorbidities a patient has. That was more, a score that was more than two were more frequent in the, in the carboplatin arm. And they had also an, uh, a greater number of hospital admissions prior to the initiation of, of chemotherapy, which is, was also a prognostic factor. These are the regimens that, uh, that were used. As you might expect, the most common carboplatin-based regimens was carboplatin and taxol in 77% of the patients. And the most common cisplatin-based regimen was cisplatin and, uh, and etoposide in 44% uh, of the patients. This uh, is the overall survival, the Kaplan-Meier curve of the overall survival. And you can see is that the lines are pr practically equal. The dotted lines are cisplatin, the straight lines are uh, carboplatin, and there was no statistical uh, difference here, with a median of 8.2 in the cisplatin arm versus 8.1 in the carboplatin arm. The problem with this is that this is not a randomized controlled trial, so there were, there's reasons why patients or physicians and patients choose uh, cisplatin versus carboplatin. But an advantage of our data is that we have a lot of uh, other things that we can do complex statistical methods to uh, build the model and see what is really important, what factors are really important uh, in, in overall survival. And we did that, and we found out that a num the number of, uh, of prior hospitalizations uh, was associated with survival. The histology, meaning non-squamous versus squamous histology, was associated with, with survival, with the non-squamous uh, patients doing better. The percentage of weight loss was also associated with survival. The more weight you lose, uh, the worse uh, you do. Anem the presence of anemia was associated with survival. The presence of hypoalbuminemia was associated with survival. The presence of chronic kidney disease, defined as an EGFR of less than 60, was associated with survival. And uh, thrombocytopenia all, almost make it, made it uh, to the statistical uh, significance as, as a pronostic factor. So when you plug all this in the same model, you, you see that cisplatin versus carboplatin does not uh, have any association with uh, uh, improved survival. Another way of looking at this, which is a complementary analysis, is doing propensity scores and as an analysis. And this is uh, explaining what propensity score is by itself a one-hour lecture. But basically what you do is you do a logistic regression to assign a score. You plug, you build a model that says, based on these characteristics, what, is my what are the chances that this patient was treated with cisplatin versus carboplatin, and it gives you a number. And then you, you match patients on that number. So if you have a 0.3 patient, uh, uh, patient that had a score of 0.3, then you, the, the computer finds a, a patient that, uh, that was treated, I'm sorry, a, a patient that was treated with cisplatin that has a score of 0.3, the computer goes and find a, finds a patient treated with carboplatin with the same score. So those patients are basically equal in their clinical characteristics. And then you, uh, you analyze the data. And what we see in this type of analysis is that uh, there was no difference in, uh, in overall survival. Another cool thing about our data is we are able to see what happens to those patients. So we see that the patients with cisplatin have more frequent hospital uh, stays, a median of 1.7 versus 1.2. Length, length of stay is uh, similar. They have more outpatient visits, 12.1 on average versus 9. Uh, almost 7. 
and have uh, more encounters uh, for complications. How we did that was to uh, using claims. So this is not a comprehensive uh, analysis of, of complications, but rather if they had an infectious uh, problem and that was, uh, and the physician put that claim in the outpatient or inpatient setting, we would capture that. And we saw that the patients had more infectious uh, complications, had more incidence of uh, acute kidney disease or dehydration, had more incidence of claims for nausea or, or vomiting, had equal findings for hemorrhage, and when we pull of that, the patients with cisplatin on average, uh, I'm sorry, the patients on cisplatin, 36% have one of those, these complications versus 27% in the patients with uh, carboplatin. Another thing that this was not a goal of our study is how our patients are, uh, how are patients doing compared to clinical trials? And I'm gonna, this is the, the survival cur curve of the ECOC 1594, which I've quoted already three times. And you can see that the median overall survival in this landmark study was eight, month, eight months, which is very similar to the 8.1 month that we see in our, in our uh, population. The one year overall survival uh, was 33% uh, in this study, very similar to the 31% in our uh, patients. And the two year overall survival 11% is also equal to the 11% that we, that we see. Now this was published in 2002, and this was 2001 to 2008, so you may say, well, that is really uh, more recent. But then I, there was a, a very recent publication, and in, in investigators in Australia, what they did was they collected all the, the phase three clinical studies uh, in, in non-small cell lung cancer and uh, built an average of medians. And what they said, what they found was that the, the average of uh, median overall survival in those uh, studies was 9.2, which compares to 8.1 in our studies. The 75 percent uh, percentile was 4.8 versus 4.3 months, so very similar. The 25 percent survival was 16.3 versus 14.4, and the 10 percent was uh, almost equal. So what that means is that our patients, despite the limitations of uh, our limitations, the VA shading are doing about the same as, uh, as uh, what we see in, in uh, clinical trials. So to conclude, cisplatin was, uh, n the cisplatin use was not associated with an improved survival within our uh, patient population. Its use was associated with uh, an increased percentage of uh, complications, and therefore we can be reassured that when we choose uh, carboplatin, uh, uh, instead of cisplatin, we're providing equal care to our patients. And the other conclusion, and this is uh, thanks to, to all of you, is that uh, our patients are, are ha having the same outcome as, as is seen in, in uh, clinical trials. And with that in mind, I'm closing this presentation. Before, I want to acknowledge all, all of our collaborators and uh, team, including Dr. Kelly, uh, Christina Williams at uh, the Duke VA, and my collaborators, uh, a statistician, Aniko Sabo, and uh, my main mentor, which is uh, Jeff Whittle, a primary care physician at, uh, at my VA. So I take any questions if there are any. Thank you.